Hi, I'm Chris Converse, and thank you for joining me today. So what we're going to do today uh, for a few minutes is I want to continue on this idea of combined files. We talked about this in the last episode, and I showed you how you can save your clients from sending them an email with a whole bunch of files attached to it, unordered, and just you know flooding their inbox. Um, so I want to continue on that same idea with combined files. But in this case, we're going to be working with documents that have interactivity built into them. A PDF file with interactive hyperlinks and bookmarks, a PowerPoint file with a hyperlink, and a web page with a hyperlink. And I want to show you how we can combine all of those interactive files into a binder and still maintain all of that usability, uh, bookmarks, and interactivity. And so while I'm demonstrating this, I won't be able to see all of the questions in the chat pod, but there are some people from Adobe who are answering questions. So if you have questions or comments, uh, feel free to add them in. And so to get started, I want to take a look at some files on my desktop here. So first, let's take a look at icelandtours.pdf file. So in this file, this file has a lot of interactivity built into it. It was created originally inside of InDesign using the hyperlinks panel, using nested master pages, and the table of contents feature. So on the main page here, if I come down and click on this little icon here, the navigation, that's going to bring me to the contents page. I can click on the check mark, which brings me to a sort of checklist for packing. A contact us page and then the home button will bring us back to the main screen. Similarly, if I come in here and click on one of the table of contents items that use the TOC feature in InDesign, this will bring me right to uh, Reykjavik here, for example. So this is going to be really important because all of these hyperlinks are going to be maintained in our resulting binder. We also got a series of bookmarks from the table of contents feature inside of InDesign as well. So we can see all of those showing up here. So that's the first PDF file we're going to be adding. The second file, let me close that. The second file is going to be a PowerPoint file. So I'll open this up in PowerPoint so we can see what we're starting with. So we have a introduction slide here and a second page that has a hyperlink built in. So we'll be adding uh, this file right to our um, binder as well. And when we do that, Acrobat will actually launch PowerPoint to generate the PDF to make sure we get all of the formatting that's available to us in PowerPoint. And then finally, we have a web page. This landing page here is a responsive web design. If I change the size of the browser, you'll see that everything moves around. And not only is this key for desktop browsers and mobile browsers, but this also means that the web capturing tool inside of Acrobat can resize the page. The design will adapt to that and then give us a beautiful looking PDF page inside that binder. So we don't have to worry about sizing our HTML to match whatever the default is for Acrobat. So with all of these in place, the next thing I want to do is take a look at an XD document. So inside of XD and Photoshop and Illustrator, we can create a mobile web experience with a series of different artboards. And so what these tools give us the ability to do is take multiple artboards and create a multi-page PDF file automatically. Now there is a prototyping tool built into XD, which will create an interactive document for HTML. Um, however, I want to use the artboards export and then we're going to add some hyperlinks inside of Acrobat because I want to show you how to create internal links inside of a PDF file. That way, if you want to create your own interactive PDF documents for your own binder, you can use the, um, this method. So to get a multi-page PDF, I'm going to come up to the file menu, choose export, all artboards. I'll choose the desktop, format will be PDF, and I'll choose single PDF file, and then export. And again, you can do something very similar with artboards in Photoshop and Illustrator as well. So if I close that and open up the PDF file, this is what this looks like. These are the artboards from that XD document. So if I use my page up and page down or arrow keys, I can arrow through all of the different artboards. So to add a hyperlink, I'm going to come in here and go to my Tools panel. Let's come down to Edit PDF. That's going to bring up the Edit toolbar across the top. Let's go to the Link menu. Let's come down to Add and Edit Web or Document Link. With that selected, I can come down here and marquee draw an area that will become the hyperlink. For the type, I'll leave this invisible. This is going to go to a page view as the action. Click Next. With this dialog box up, I can navigate to either a different page or even a zoom view for where I want that link to resolve to. So I'll come up here and go to page down, go to page two, and then simply hit set link. Close out of my edit tool. Now when I'm in this PDF and I hover over this link, I can click this and go right to page two. So this is the manual way of creating an internal hyperlink inside of PDF. The Iceland tours, as I mentioned before, I got all of those from using the hyperlinks panel in InDesign, so it did the work for me. 
So now that that's changed, I'm going to close this document. I'm going to save it. So now this PDF file has some interactivity as well. So now I'm going to go back to the main screen of Acrobat. I'll clear my recent files. Let's come up to the Tools menu, and I'll come down and choose Combine Files. So inside of this dialog box here, I can now simply drag and drop or use the Add Document icon and add files into this, uh, what will become a new PDF binder. So I'll start with the Iceland Tours. Just simply drag and drop this and drop it right in the page. I can see this little multi-page icon here and these arrows that are pointing outward. If I click on these, I can see all of the pages that are part of that PDF. If I click the arrows again, it'll close up and that entire PDF file is now being represented as a single uh, thumbnail. Let's go back to the desktop. I'll grab the PowerPoint file, drag and drop this in. As I mentioned before, and you might have seen that really quick, the PowerPoint file will open in PowerPoint and then PowerPoint will generate a PDF file based on the instructions from Acrobat. If I toggle this open, page two will get generated as well. So every slide in my PowerPoint deck, PowerPoint deck will be converted to a page in my PDF. Next, let's go back to that web page. What I'm going to do here is come up here to the URL. I'm going to copy that URL to the clipboard. Go back to Acrobat, come up to the plus document sign. Let's come down and choose add web page. And here I will paste in the URL and then simply hit add. So now Acrobat will not go out and fetch that data until we actually hit the combine button in the upper right hand corner here. So I'll leave that for the moment as a placeholder. Let's go back, let's grab Tour and Company Final, which we got from XD. Again, I can open this up and see all the artboards, close it down. And now with all of these files combined, let's come up here and hit the combine button. So now Acrobat's going to go through and look at all of the files that we've added, the PowerPoint files, the web pages. And once it's done, it's going to create a brand new binder file. So in this case, this is binder4.pdf. And if I do fit view, I can see the entire page. If I open up the pages panel and scroll through, I can see all of the resulting pages of this PDF. So this is the end of the tours. Here are the two PowerPoint slides. If I continue to scroll down, here's the web page. Let's just click on that. We can see that was beautifully formatted because it was a responsive uh, web page that we started from. And then we have all of our individual um, app designs from XD. And the beautiful part is if I go to the home page, for example, and I come down and I click on this table of contents, that's going to bring me to the table of contents, the checklist, contact this page, home, or I can again jump over to Reykjavik. And if I scroll down in the pages panel, I can jump down to PowerPoint. If I click on a hyperlink, I can choose um, whether that hyperlink is actually going to bring me to a page. Notice that hyperlink, the URL brings me to the URL of the landing page, so that's great. This URL here with the W in there would bring me off site. If I were to click on this, I could allow Acrobat to link me off to that website. I'll hit cancel here. And then finally, if I come down to the first screen of the XD document, hover over discover, click on this, this will bring me to page two. So all of the interactivity, including one of the hyperlinks, which actually linked to the very page we brought into the document, resolves inside of that same PDF file. And if we come over to the bookmarks panel and look at all of the bookmarks, every one of the bookmarks has been resolved as well. So if I come in here and click on the geyser, waterfall, everything we got from the table contents feature of InDesign, which was then put into the binder, all keeps its appropriate places. And we can even see that by using the combined feature, we have hyperlinks that go offline or hyperlinks that actually link to other pages like Tor and Company or the landing page. So that's an incredible amount of uh, interactivity that we got. Um, and I emphasize that a little bit because I did see a message or a question rather come in from Carla asking if internal links work on a binder. And so, uh, yes, as we're seeing here, and as we mentioned before, all of those links are, are resolving to the right spot, even though we now have this one giant file inside of the PDF. So at this point, I can choose File Save, and I can save my binder. I can save it directly to my Creative Cloud, for example. So I can come down here, and I can click Torn Company and save that. So I've already done that ahead of time. So I'm going to bring up my mobile device, and let's just check the interactivity on a mobile device. So I'll come in here and load Adobe Acrobat. From my list at the top, let's go down to Creative Cloud. Let's go to Torn Company folder. There's the binder I created a few minutes ago. Let's open this up and you'll see all of the same interactivity that we had before. I can tap on the table of contents. I can tap on the check marks. I can hit the lower right hand button, which is this button down here, bring up all the bookmarks and 
open up Iceland Tours and just jump right to a specific page within the document. So that's a lot of interactivity that's been um, supported and carried over into the binder format. And again, just like in the last episode, I hope this helps you uh, keep multiple file sets organized, gives you a nice, clean, and uh, efficient way to hand off a bunch of files to your clients. And um, with that, I hope you found this helpful, and I hope to see you in the next episode.